What does dialectical mean? What are dialectics? What does it mean to say something and it, to say it dialectically? Um, that's a, a word, a words that will come up repeatedly in, in, in Kierkegaard. In, in this section, uh, focusing on right now, which begins on page 52, um, he makes some claims here that you should decide upon whether whether they're serious claims. And, and I, I guess the, the major claim here is that, as he says in the bottom of page 52, what is rare is not that someone should be in despair. No, what is rare, the great rarity, is that one should truly not be in despair. That's a radical claim because he's not saying that everyone is in despair all the time. That would that, that would not be what he means. Um, but he is saying, I think, that most people are in despair most of the time. And, and what that means is that most people, or many people at least, are in despair and, and they don't know it. So um, how, how can that be? How, how can it be even, he says in the bottom of page 55, that despair has its choicest dwelling place, he says, deep in the heart of happiness, so that one could be happy and be in despair. Only if despair is dialectical. Uh, what does that mean? Well, um, dialectical, uh, I'm not even going to try to define dialectics or dialectical, but l let's just say that one, one the, the dialectics means that the, the very same claim can be both true and false, in a way. Uh, depending on who says it and when. Uh, the person who says, I am not in despair, I am happy, uh, is correct. If, if you're happy, you're happy. But that's looked at from a certain viewpoint. In, in fact, I'd say that's looked at from the viewpoint of being a human being. Your, your body and your mind your, 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 are in good working order and you are are living a pleasant life, you're happy. But if you look at the human being not as a human being, because there's a difference here between being a human being and being a self, if we look at the human being from the point of view of self, which is the point of view of being spirit, uh, it could be a very different story. That is, one could be happy in all outward respects, but, in, but their spirit could be in a completely different condition. Their spirit could be one of despair. And again, it may be something that they're not even aware of. Uh, despair, which again has not been really defined yet, is being compared a little bit in this section with physical illness. We can certainly be ill, physically ill, and not know it. And sometimes it takes a doctor and maybe a whole team of specialists and big old machines to tell us different, to find out different. Uh, we can certainly be in despair, Kierkegaard says, and, and, and not know it, because we don't know what to look for. So, if we look at ourselves from the point of view of spirit, then it's quite possible that everything could seem fine in our lives, but we are somehow in despair, and that every moment of our lives, we're right on the edge of being in despair, and, and in another sense, right on the edge, if we are in despair, of not being in despair, because again, despair is a matter of will and choice, unlike physical illness. And he says something very striking at the second paragraph of page 55. This means, and stems from the fact, that regarded as spirit, and if there is to be any question of despair, man has to be regarded under the aspect of spirit. Uh, that is, despair is not a condition of an animal, even a human animal. Despair is a condition of a spirit, that is, of a free, self-conscious being. And he says the, the human condition is always critical. That is, uh, just as physically our condition could be critical, if at any moment we could go either way, towards death or life. Uh, the human spirit, our spirit, uh, the condition is always critical because since being in despair or not being in despair is really a matter of will and choice, 
we could go either way at any moment, our whole lives, or our whole during our whole existence as spirit, which is actually a, from this Christian point of view, is is, is an eternal uh, situation, eternal life. So, as he says at the end of that paragraph on page 55, there is no immediate state of spiritual health. There's no simple state of health. Everything is mediated. Everything is complicated. Everything is dialectical in the sense that uh, depending on which way we go, any truth could turn into its opposite. And anything that we think is true about ourselves could become untrue. So what is he talking about here? He's talking about the possibility of being in despair, perhaps one whole, one's whole life, and not even knowing it. Well, that's a very radical claim. Again, you should think about it. Maybe some insight is given on page 57. This is in that long second paragraph, a few lines down. He says, so much is spoken about wasting one's life. But the only life wasted is the life of one who so lived it, deceived by life's pleasures or its sorrows, that he never became decisively, eternally conscious of himself as spirit. So it's quite possible to live a life in which you never realize yourself as spirit, never become aware of yourself in the fullest sense of your freedom, uh, your true situation of, of, of what you really are, which is spirit, not simply body and not simply mind. That he never became decisively, eternally conscious of himself as spirit, as self, or what is the same, he never became aware and gained in the deepest sense the impression that there is a God there and that he himself, his self, exists before this God, before in the spatial sense of being in the presence of God, which infinite gain is never come by except through despair. So, very large claim there that, that most people are in despair most of the time, and, and many of them don't even know it. And uh, that one of the ways you can be in despair is through a kind of an unconsciousness of your true situation, which again, from Kierkegaard's Christian religious point of view, is that our true situation is that we are always in the presence of God. Not that God is somewhere over there, or over there, or when we die, we meet him. And, and no, 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 no. The reality of your situation, Kierkegaard seems to be saying, God's here right now, all the time. And one form of despair, not the only form, as we'll see, and not the most acute form of despair, is to not even know it, which is, in a way, the easiest thing in the world, especially if you're happy.